is pulling out of UNESCO, accusing the United Nations Organization of anti-Israel bias. Let's bring in our panel to break all of this down for us. Uh, Richard Stengel, MSNBC political analyst, also served as Under Secretary of State under John Kerry. Ambassador Nancy Soderberg, former U.S. Ambassador at the United Nations, and Mark Dubowitz at the Foundation for Defense of Democratic Strategies. It's great to have all of you uh, with us. Ambassador Soderberg, if I may begin with you, uh, we're we're seeing the Trump administration here really breaking. Out uh, of this agreement, although it's staying part of the JCPOA, it is breaking out from its European allies over the Iran issue. Do you think that the U.S. here is really at risk of isolating itself from the international community on this particular issue? Uh, no question about that. And I think that's why the president did not fully pull out of the deal the way he did on the Paris uh, agreement, because he knows none of the allies that helped negotiate this deal will be with us. Um, okay. Iran is in compliance with a very narrow agreement, which simply stopped his nuclear, uh, the nuclear program. Barely. It didn't address the terrorism or the ballistic missiles. And I think he were he to do this the right way, he could say, well, the Iran deal is working. Let's see if we can expand the negotiations to include, include some of these other areas. By blowing this deal up or threatening to do it, he's making further negotiations impossible. Uh, Richard, the, the, the administration is keen on what they say is fixing the JCPOA by decertifying it. Mm -hmm. But in some mix, to some extent, they've actually just domesticized or made it a domestic issue. They've politicized it by kicking it over to Congress and now saying to Congress, you you fix the problem. Uh, nothing has changed about the deal whatsoever. It's maybe putting it on weaker legs, but the deal is still the deal. Yes. I mean, first of all, congratulations on your show. <laughs> this you. is so important. Foreign policy has never been more important. I'm so glad we're doing this. So, Thank you. Um, to get to your question, I mean, there is a political dimension. I mean, I think if President Obama negotiated the sun coming up tomorrow, then President Trump would want to negotiate the sun not coming up tomorrow. So he's just he's putting it, he's politicizing it. What's strange and disturbing, I think, is that we're not we're better off in an absolutely scientific way. It's not even subjective, right? Yeah. Uh, Iran was a threshold nuclear state when Secretary Kerry and the State Department started negotiating with them two years ago. Their breakout period was a matter of weeks or even months. Now, whether you dispute whether it's 10 years, 15 or 20 years, that's so much better than where they were before. So, so this it's politicized. He's made it into a domestic issue. But I would argue that by any objective standard, we are so much better off with this deal than without it. Uh, Mark, I'm going to give you a chance to weigh in on that because I know that you are someone who has been very critical of the deal. You do think that this decision by President Trump is the right decision. Uh, and I want to give you a chance to explain why you think that is before we get into some of the specifics. Look, I mean, the, the nuclear deal itself, because of restrictions that go away over time, and those restrictions start going away, actually, in about three years and start to really accelerate in about six to eight years, Iran has patient pathways to nuclear weapons and ICBMs. So we, none of us want a nuclear deal that's going to pave the way to an Iranian atomic weapon, as well as an Iran that continues its destructive behavior in the region. My view is that it was important to decertify this deal to break the paralysis of U.S.-Iran policy and begin to move forward with a more forceful policy to push back against Iranian regime behavior in the region, its repression at home, and its global terrorist networks. I think we have an opportunity now to fix the deal. And what I've been optimistic to see is the Europeans actually moving their position for one of just keep it to one of fix it. I think all of us oppose the idea of nixing it. So let me pick up on that point, which is the issue that uh, um, Rick was talking about. Is this now a domestic issue for the U.S. Congress to deal with? Because as we were saying, nothing has changed about the deal. The U.S. is still very much in the deal. So now it's up to Congress. And there are already some divisions within Congress because they've heard from Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis. They've heard from really a, a long list of people from the administration saying the deal is working. Why not just keep the deal and brought in the negotiations, something the Iranians have said they're willing to do, to include things like ballistic missiles, to include things like Iran's involvement across the region? Why, why decertify, not just brought in the negotiations? Well, Secretary Mattis, Secretary Tillerson, there was a unanimous decision by the cabinet to recommend a decertification. And I think all of them recognize that while the in the national security interests of the United States for now, and that we should keep the deal and not nix it for now. But Mattis said we should stay in the deal stay in the deal, but also move forward at, with a strategy to fix the deal. Because it is not in the national security interests of the United States to provide this Iranian regime and this revolutionary guards with patient pathways to nuclear weapons and ICBMs. I think all of the president's advisors 
recommended the strategy, and I think it's more important to understand that the strategy is a broader strategy. It's not just decertification. It's a broader strategy to push back against Iranian aggression and to fix a deeply flawed nuclear deal that's going to pave the way to a North Korean-type mess in eight to ten years. None of us want that. Okay, let me pick up on North Korea and bring in Ambassador Soderberg here. Why in the world would North Koreans, watching what is unfolding right now and seeing the United States decertify the Iran deal, see some people even trying to undermine it and do away with it, why would they be incentivized to come to the table to talk to the U.S. about this? Well, they, they won't be, but let me, let me just come back on those points. First of all, it is not true that his entire team unanimously recommended pulling out of the Iran deal. That is absolutely not true. No. They believe that the Iran deal is in our interest and that Iran is complying with the narrow terms of the agreement. And it is sheer fantasy to think that this Congress can fix the deal. It's a multinational deal. We can't fix it unilaterally. So we're either going to blow the deal up or live with it and try and address some of these other issues. And that's what the president's going to rapidly find out. Um, this is a, a play to his base. Again, all he does is play to his base. And, and anything that Obama did, um, uh, short of uh, questioning whether Osama bin Laden is dead, this administration is, is going to try and do. And it's going to undermine us with our allies in Korea. In particular, we need to have the Chinese put pressure on there. This undermines the effort to walk away from North Korean war. I think what the administration has decided to do is do a pinprick strike against the ballistic missile weapons um, in North Korea, and then that will trigger a very harsh response from that regime. So we're on a crisis mode there very rapidly unless they veer from that plan. Uh, look, Rick, let me ask you really quickly about the, the point that I was uh, bringing up with North Koreans. In terms of international diplomacy, does this undermine anyone wanting to deal with the United States? You, you yes. bring people to the table for two years, you negotiate actually longer, but openly, and then you turn around and say, you know what, this deal doesn't work for us anymore. President Trump has single-handedly turned the U.S. into something like a pariah state, getting out of TPP, uh, reneging on this deal, getting out of the Paris uh, Climate uh, Accords. We were once the bastion for all these international agreements. Now we're, li uh, we're treated like a country like that, that people don't trust, like Iran. And this is all because of Trump not being willing to certify, to agree to these international agreements that we basically hosted and negotiated. Yeah, and given the track record of uh, the U.S. Congress on issues of health care taxes and immigration, they haven't achieved anything yet. It's going to be hard to imagine that they can get their heads uh, to agree on the Iran. Uh, this is uh, really uh, hard. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, All right, Rick Stingle. Just a little bit of historical perspective. The, we, have, we have actually amended 200 agreements, including arms control agreements. Barack Obama walked away from a missile defense agreement with the Czech Republic and Poland. President Bush actually canceled a ballistic missile. The, the notion that somehow this is on precedent. It is fantasy. This has happened hundreds of times, including with the Soviet Union, right. when they had nuclear tip missiles aimed at our cities. So let's keep it in historical perspective as we evaluate yeah. the way forward. But you need we, to get your facts guys, right. I'm sorry. Those we could be talking are, about this. We can be talking about this all hour <laughs> long, and we certainly will have a lot more conversations about the Iran nuclear, deal, especially when it starts getting to Congress. But we've run out of time. I appreciate uh, Rick Stengel, Nancy Soderberg, Mark Dubowitz. Thank you very much for joining us this Sunday. Thanks My so pleasure. much.